Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob where we say, what does this mean? Uh, probably not a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> probably not a whole hell of a lot. So I get a lot of questions about Risk Five. Eli, Eli, what do you think about Risk Five? And I'll look those people square in the eye and say, you know, I've heard it exists. <laughs> I have been informed that Risk Five exists. No, but Eli, but Eli, is everybody going to be using a Risk Five computer? Um, pro probably not. Probably not. And then people get sad and they get depressed because reality is always much sadder and much more depressing than people want to, to think that it is. So what is Risk Five? Risk Five is an open source, a hardware standard uh, for processors, right? So you will hear of the x86 uh, or the Intel architecture. This is basically owned by Intel, and they produce, you know, the uh, the, the chips that generally go into Windows and Linux systems, uh, and basically it's proprietary. They design the process processor and then you buy whatever the hell it is that they design right? Then you have the ARM processors that are out there. And ARM is kind of interesting. It's a British company. Basically, the idea with ARM is they design the architecture and, and then companies license those designs, are able to modify those designs, and then send, send those modified designs to a fab such as TSMC. So the idea, especially like with Apple, Apple knows what they want to do with their specific devices. So they design uh, the, the processors around the tasks they want their devices to do. They use um, the, the licensed architecture from ARM, uh, and then they, they ship that to TSMC to actually uh, produce the chips. And so the idea with RISC-V uh, is that it's completely open source, right? It's open, so open source hardware, just like an Arduino is. Uh, the idea being all the specifications are there for anybody to use. Anybody can create their own processors. And as we know in the technology world, open source always wins, you know. At least I've been informed that. So a lot of people think uh, that Risk Five is going to be the future. Um, I, I don't know. When we talk about the future, eh, as I say, I'm almost 49. So I don't know, in 20 years, maybe. <laughs> in 20 years maybe. I'm not sure in the next decade or so it will be the future. And the reality is, is when you start looking at things like open source, uh, it comes down to something called TCO or total cost of ownership. Uh, if you look at desktop computers, uh, Linux does not own the market in desktop computers, even though it's a free operating system, a free open source operating system, because the total cost of ownership is too high. One of the things that you see with a lot of corporations that use Windows is they look at Linux and Linux is free and they look at buying a Windows server license, and this Windows server license costs $600, but when they look at actually supporting the system over its lifetime, uh, what they realize is that supporting a Windows system over its lifetime is going to be less expensive uh, than supporting a Linux uh, machine. I think about this with, uh, oh, my little old Dojo Derby vehicles, right, with uh, Raspberry Pis. So anyways, with Silicon Dojo, one of the concepts I came up with was a Dojo Derby back in the day, uh, where we create these little robot vehicles. So the concept is we create robo car, robot cars, and then we compete with them or whatever else. Anyway, so I tried to do this project during COVID. And during COVID, everybody decided to buy uh, Raspberry Pis. And so there was a shortage of Raspberry Pis. And one of the things that came up is like, well, Eli, Eli, don't use it. Don't use a Raspberry Pi. Use a, Li I think they're called Libre computers. So there's a whole bunch of different versions-ish of a uh, Raspberry Pi out there. There's like Libre computer and other things. Uh, and the issue with those is the hardware might be fine, but everything else kind of sucks. Uh, support sucks. Uh, the software that goes with them sucks. It's just quirky as hell. Like you, ac you actually read the reviews of people trying to build crap on those things. Can you build something? Yes. It's not very easy. The nice thing with uh, with the Raspberry Pi is you get the Raspberry Pi, you get the Pi OS, basically just a Debian distro of Linux. Everything is optimized uh, for these little boards. Everything works well. When you buy uh, the Raspberry Pi, you get a finished product. When you buy a Libre computer, you get a Libre computer, <laughs> right? And I think that's gonna be the issue when we talk about Risk Five is 
you know, how much, how much value is there in supporting risk five, right? If you, in the Linux world, there's already a, 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 or in the ARM world, there's already a tremendous amount of support for ARM. In the Intel world, you already have Intel that's pushing it. Uh, people are already building uh, software for it. They already build compatible hardware. Uh, there's already all of that kind of stuff. When you start looking at risk five, even though it's open source, so theoretically it's good from an open source standpoint, is there the support that corporations and people expect? when they buy a risk 5 uh, CPU that's one of the things that I question I think it'll take a long time uh, before risk 5 really takes off but when it'll get people really excited and so you'll hear this blow up for a little while until it dies back down again is Nvidia's uh, CUDA is now going to be supporting risk 5 uh, so Nvidia's CUDA platform now supports risk 5 support brings open source instruction set to AI platforms joining x86 and ARM and so the idea here is basically you have an Nvidia GPU a uh, CUDA uh, is basically an instruction set um, it's uh, it allows you to, to run uh, the GPUs more efficiently and be able to uh, oh, multitask and GPUs do different things. CUDA, CUDA is basically one of the reasons why NVIDIA is as useful and as popular as it is. And so the concept here is you can have the CPU. So the, C, the CPU is just the CPU of the computer, right? The CPU. So the idea is you could have a RISC-V CPU. You could connect an NVIDIA GPU to, to the RISC-V CPU, and then you have a full-fledged computer to do whatever it is that you want to do, right? If you want to do uh, video gaming or AI or whatever else, RISC-V will now able, be able to control uh, that GPU, which is kind of a curious thing. How valuable will it be at the end of the day? Who the hell knows? It's kind of like the idea, like, you know, with ARM processors. Supposedly, I think you can run a GPU off of a, uh, a Raspberry Pi. Can you do it? Yes. How many people actually do it? Eh, who the hell knows? Uh, let's see, if we go down here, take a look at it. Uh, at the 2025 Risk V Summit in China, NVIDIA announced that its CUDA software platform will be made compatible with the Risk V instruction set architecture on the CPU side of things. The news was confirmed during a presentation during a Risk V event. This is a major step in enabling Risk V ISA based CPUs in performance demanding applications. The uh, announcement uh, makes it clear that Risk V can now serve as the main processor for CUDA. CUDA based systems, a role trendi traditionally filled by x86 or ARM cores. While nobody even barely, uh, nobody, uh, barely expects uh, RISC V in hyperscale data centers anytime soon, RISC V can be used on CUDA enabled edge devices such as NVIDIA's Jetson modules. However, it looks like NVIDIA does indeed expect RISC V to be in the data center uh, at some point. So, what is this from my perspective? Is, does this mean that RISC V? Five has turned a corner and we're going to start buying risk five systems uh, next year no probably not what i would probably argue with this is that nvidia is now a four trillion dollar company it's a four trillion dollar company they got all the money they got all the money and so if you have a gpu you're making all your money off of gpus and really your Oh, your moat or whatever is this CUDA software. I think it makes sense to spend the money to be able to support basically any kind of CPU that might be out there, right? So does this mean that they think RISC-V is going to be the next big player in the CPU world? I would question that. But here's the thing. It might be. It might be. So what, what happens if NVIDIA at a $4 trillion market share doesn't invest in RISC-V support now, and then two years from now, some other AI company invests in RISC-V support, and then RISC-V takes off for some stupid ass reason, right? Imagine Trump, we got three and a half more years of Trump. We've only got, we're, we're only six months into Trump. So let's say, you know, two years from now, Trump comes out with something that affects how um, uh, China is able to support, to source CPUs. Again, ARM is, ARM is licensed out of uh, the, the UK. Uh, Intel is Intel. What if, what if Trump pulls another executive order out of his buttocks and all of a sudden China is now able to access the CPUs, right? Then it would make sense for them to look at this, this RISC-V architecture. What if China basically overnight, uh, you know, flips over to a RISC-V architecture? If NVIDIA has already built everything that's required to be able to support RISC-V, then they're fine. 
then they're fine, right? So it's a pretty it's a pretty low low risk bet for them, right? They they invest the money to support risk five. If risk five doesn't really go anywhere or it's not a huge thing, it doesn't matter because they're worth four trillion dollars, <laughs> right? A couple of billion dollars uh, in a four trillion dollar company doesn't really matter. Uh, on the other hand, if risk five takes off, they're already locked into risk five. They already have the experience, the institutional knowledge, everything else, and they can just start selling their products uh, for risk five. So I think that's probably why they're doing it. Uh, should you go out and buy a risk five processor right now? Uh, I don't know, if you want to. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to, I'm not gonna tell you no. Should you go out and buy a risk five processor? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> do what you wanna do. Um, I'm not gonna be too worried about it. I think ARM, I think ARM is going to own the world uh, for a little while longer, uh, but who knows, you know, in the next, um, in the next 10 years, maybe risk five will take off. You know, you think about this with operating systems, right? Um, operating systems used to be incredibly valuable, right? For, for your computer to work, you needed an operating system. So Unix, right? Before Linux, Unix uh, was a proprietary paid for operating system. Windows, DOS was paid for. Mac OS, basically paid for it when you buy the, uh, buy the computer or whatever else. Uh, operating systems were incredibly valuable. The thought of giving away an operating system was free for free basically seemed ridiculous. Uh, but we get to 2025 at this point. Now uh, you look at Linux. Linux is on most computers in the world. Not desktop computers or laptop computers, but most computers it's on, right? Whether it's your, your smart TV or your smart microwave or your washing machine or the server that everything connects to or whatever else, Linux is out there and it's free because at a certain point, you know, once, an, once the concept of operating systems has been around for, you know, 30 or 40 years, it's not really that valuable anymore, right? There was even argument in Microsoft like 10 years ago, they were talking about literally giving away the Windows desktop operating system for free because it no longer made a lot of business sense to charge for it. And then the CFO smacked the shit out of somebody and they keep charging for it. But, right? And so that's, that's, that's the thing. Like, if you go back to 1995, the idea of a free operating, operating system would see, kind of, seem kind of ridiculous. So we look at risk five, right? So if we're, if we're in the equivalent of 1995 as far as CPUs are concerned, right? Do, do I expect everybody to flip over to risk five by 2030? Probably not. But, you know, by, 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 by 2040, how how valuable are CPUs going to be in 2040? Is this is the CPU market going to be anything that anybody wants to compete over, right? Because if you look at GPUs, right, GPUs is an add-on to CPUs. It's an entirely different thing. If you look at quantum computers, quantum computers, right? That, that's a peripheral device. It's essentially like even when they talk about uh, QPUs, quantum processing units. It's essentially like a GPU, it's an add-on device. If you look at so much of the, the value coming out of computing devices today, it's all the add-on components, not really the CPU itself. So, uh, so anyways, that is my thought on NVIDIA supporting RISC-V. Uh, no snark, literally no snark, cool, <laughs> cool. Does it make me want to go and use RISC-V? No, <laughs> no. So anyways, what do you think about RISC-V? What do you think about NVIDIA's CUDA supporting RISC-V? Are you excited to get your hands on a RISC-V open source processor? Or who the hell cares? Ah, put your thoughts down below. Uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down, give us an awesome comment or a god awful comment. It all is an interaction as far as YouTube is concerned and that's all that matters in 2025. So anyways, with that, see y'all later.